Good evening to all our viewers. It is Wednesday night and it is time for salt water. With the sardine infested waters not getting in down in KwaZulu Natal, we have Tish Yellant from down there again on uh, For Anglers, the digital platform that keeps fishing alive. Welcome, Tish, and how's it going down there? Oh, Vanna, it is absolutely beautiful. The sardines are gale force. Um, if ever they waited for nobody to be able to cross the borders, this is the year. They are absolutely like south coast, north coast. It's all over the place. So we're very excited as Durbanites. That's brilliant. So who are you bringing um, to the viewers today? Introduce us. Uh, this evening we are stoked because one of my favorite anglers, and she knows it, um, I nicknamed her Sparky because she always has a spark on her face and always smiling. Alzan Cronier from Team Southern Cape and Pro Tier Team, welcome. Uh, hi, Tish. Hi, Werner. Yes, guys, thanks. I'm very honored to be here. Thank you. What is it like down in the Cape at the moment? No sardines, obviously. <laughs> Yeah, no, so I wish it was. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's very nice. We actually have lovely weather now, but, but it's a cold front coming. So, yeah, but otherwise, still working, quiet. Yeah, I'd rather go fishing, so. Have you been fishing lately? Um, yes, I did go for a few days down to Stillby. So we did catch some shad, Mkholyun, and got my spotty or two as well. So, yes, yeah. It's very nice going and relax a bit. So you're in the um, most southern, almost in the most southern point. How do you go down to Stolby? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Over to you. Elzar, yeah. yes, we start this evening because we have our time is running out. Vanna puts a muzzle on me after 20 minutes. So I just actually want to start as always. I mean, I would love to find out. And we're starting with this beautiful raggy shop, but we'll talk about that one later. But how old were you when you actually started fishing? Because I know you've got a long history coming, you know, your dad and his love for the ocean. How old were you when you got involved in angling? Um, yeah, I think we grew up basically next to the river in Stillwai. So our girls, we were four daughters and the eldest three. I mean, we basically have fishing rods for our toys. I mean, we grew up, we just went down to the river and just go fish. But obviously, as you're getting older, there's other more stuff that's getting into your life and more important. And I think it was after school, I was about 1921, I joined the Stillwhite Club just as a social angler. And I th fished basically, I think, for 14 years before I really get into competitive angling. And what was the first team that you were selected for ever? The Southern Cape team. Yeah, I think that okay. was in 2008 yeah okay so it wasn't um you didn't fish long just nationals before you actually got your protea colors i think i got i got my gas colors the third and the fourth year and my fifth year i got my protea colors and this raggy here that you're looking at that was caught in that was caught in jeffrey's bay um i think that must have been one of my best tournaments ever as a protea angler i mean our girls we were fished against Namibia and we landed in a spot where there was a raggy smash. And um, I've never caught a raggy my whole life before. This was actually the second one that I landed. The first one I had to land by myself because there was no management, no guide, no one was close to me. And I was so bloody scared for this thing with all the teeth. But yeah, I managed to land it. <laughs> and then luckily the second one, there was someone there with a the camera. So I could take a photo. What was the bait? Yeah, I, um, I think this one was 134 kgs. Yeah. And, and this was a eight? smaller one. I used a mackerel head for this one with mackerel flaps around it and obviously full full metal jacket, full steel dress. Yes. Um, no, that time we were actually didn't start fishing with grinders yet. I think that was 2013. Okay. No, we were all still multipliers and my now so um when we talk about you know most memorable catches i mean uh, would you would you imagine this to be one of them yeah that was actually my first nationals in eden or in southern cape um i think it was my third year that i fished and we were fishing in bochum's bay that's bochum's bay flies bay and that's probably one of my also one of my favorite places to fish on that beach yeah, and it was just, I think it's because I think it's the only photo I have with a multiplier reel in. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the tournament where you shoved your bait knife into your leg by any chance. No, that was straight by. 
Yeah, that was the year before. This one I cut up my or cut open my finger with my hook. Uh, always those. Yeah. And how do you change your mindset a lot when you go between FIPS tournaments? Because you also pro tier angle for your FIPS tournament and like for rock and surf. How do you change your mindset? Um, you've been doing this for quite a while now between the two. Yeah, I think um, the first time when I fished FIPS, I actually um, fished Pratia FIPS before I um, fished the Pratia Zone 5 tournament. And my first tournament, my first FIPS in Holland was you didn't know what to expect because this you know we don't really do um training beforehand so then you get there and it's totally different i mean your mindset just to to change between you're standing in a 20 meter camp and you're not allowed to go anywhere and then guys are catching fish next to you you're not catching anything so you actually you need to get them more like contentment with yourself and also believe in yourself and your abilities in what you're doing. And going to that, I think that is the thing that I learned the most of FIPS is really to believe in yourself and whatever you know in your fishing abilities. I mean, because if you don't believe in yourself and what you can do, you won't you won't do a FIPS tournament. I mean, that is really uh, yeah, totally different game than rock and surf. Totally. Now, one of your favorite fish that you love hugging to help on is a spotted gully, or um, if we carry on with the photos, yeah. I think that's one of your favorite fish to target. Oh, that's a lovely blu ray. Where did you catch that? That was in the West Coast in Farkenfly. Yeah. Oh, really? That was, yeah, and that was, I caught that like five minutes. I looked it five minutes before the end. I think of the second day of nationals there. Type of fish to make you smile. Um, if you have a favorite bait, Alzan, for these fish, I mean, do you have a general bait or do you just like you know, on the day decide what to what what you're going to go for change? I think it's probably you need to decide what you want to target. But my favorite bait will definitely be chocker bait because it's so versatile. Yeah. So for us fishing in Southern Cape, I mean, we basically chocker bait is the go-to bait there fishing in leagues and competitions. So we're going to ask you the same thing. I mean, Chocker Bait, will you um, be willing to do a bait presentation at some stage? And you've got no excuse because you can literally walk across the road and I know you're on the beach. <laughs> so I'll do it. <laughs> we'll keep you to that one. Where did you get this hmm. cobby? Is that, oh, that's Namibia. That is Namibia, yeah. Um, I think this was four years ago. We That was on a training day. We were catching cobs for dinner that night because our manager, his aunt lives in Hentis and she fried um, fresh cob for us. But this was literally, we didn't have any bait left and there was just a small sardine head lying on the ground next to the bucket and I just put it on the hook and cast. And then this beauty of a cob, yeah. That's a nice cob. Where exactly was that at Hentis? Or? Yeah, that is at Hentis. Okay. What, beach, what uh, piece of, of beach was that? Where was it exactly? I'm not sure. I think it was, I don't, I don't know. I think it was mile 68. I'm really not sure. It's it reminds so a bit. when we ask the I don't want you to put a piece of uh, sardine head on your hook. Um, <laughs> more important than that. Tell us about this catch. Um, this is a hand shark that I caught in Hamburg in Border. That was actually a tournament when, when I got my prote protea colors for the first time. And this hand, I think that's actually the hand that got me into the protea team. And this year when we fished Border, I was actually so disappointed that we didn't fish the ledges again because I really like that place. It's, it's really, I really enjoyed the nationals there. It doesn't look like an easy place to wade. No, it's more ledges where you um, go on, on the ledges, on sandstone ledges. So it was, yeah, it's, it's really, it's beautiful there. So I love border. It's really a beautiful area. I love this photo, beautiful, hugging the fish. Love it. <laughs> yeah, this was caught last year during a club competition in Stilwai. We went, we actually also fished Winter League and I, we targeted the spotties. And this was actually a very beautiful spot. I mean, she was heavily pregnant and so beautiful. I mean, Absolutely. I must say, spotties, yeah, spotties is one of my favorite 
fish to catch. I just love targeting Spotties. How do you target them? Uh, what do you do specifically? What do you do different? What is, what is, what's all the steps? If I, if I tell you, let's go catch spotties, what, how do we prepare and where do we go and what do we use? Yeah, when we normally go in Stolva, I mean, you'll look for your rocky places. We have a few spots there where we know the, um, the spotties will be. And yeah, you take your heavier tackle. I mean, you're not going to go with your Hallyun trace and your Hallyun tackle to start with a spotty. Yeah, basically, you go to your rocky places, rock pools and yeah, my favorite bait for a spotty will be a black tail. I just love black tail. Um, they, they can't resist a fresh piece of black tail. And then obviously your mullet. Okay, but just, uh, a, just a piece of fillet um, or on, on yeah. the or larger? We, we tend to make a little larger bait. I mean, um, yeah, spotty's not, he's not scared of a big bait. I mean, he'll take it. And your, your spotties, when you target your spotties, Alzan, I mean, would you go in there with a bite trace or a nylon trace? Or? I like to fish with clean mono for spotties. The reason would be, I don't, sometimes I will do a small biting trace, short, but the most spotties that I'll catch is on plain mono. Moving on from the, I think is another spotty coming up, but I mean, moving, oh yes, absolutely. <laughs> Tell us a bit about this. This spot here caught in Antis Bay. I think that was mile six or mile eight. I'm not sure. It was actually very funny. I had to swim and almost run to the place where I actually had to cast from. At a stage, my manager was standing next to me on the rocks there, right where the white water ends. And I said to him, you know, I've swum all this way and now I actually caught a piece of bamboo on my line. And I was really so disappointed because now I need to get out and go wade in again drown again, go cast. And then all of a sudden, these bamboo decided, no, he wants to start swimming now. So that was my spotty. And yeah, oh. it's, it's really nice because that day, I think we actually clinched the tournament as well. I mean, Gabos also caught a spotty next to me that day. So yeah, it was really a nice fun day on the beach. Absolutely magnificent fish. And it's wonderful if you catch them in a tournament that is so important. Little, yeah. Give us some on this beautiful one. Oh, that was actually, it's the first Timbras I ever caught. We were fishing a league in Plettenberg Bay. I was fishing with my sister and just all of a sudden with my first cast, this, this fish just run off. I mean, I can believe now why they're actually calling them steamers. I mean, it's such a beautiful fish. It's, it's really, uh, yeah, it was so nice catching it. It's got a lot of Oh, well, real Beautiful. nice fight, clean fighters. Oh, yeah, and you've got to explain this one because that is like <laughs> such a catch. Yeah, it's actually many, many years ago um, when I first started fishing. Also, one of my favorite fish in winter time, or actually, end of the year, Hallyun season, mm -hmm. is mussel cracker. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is mm -hmm. such, also, also give you such a nice fight, clean fight. And yeah, one clean of my fight. favorite fish. Yes. I, I, have so, a, I, have a, I have a question about uh, muscle cracker and I've, I've seen you, you have the white one and the black one. In terms of behavior and uh, where you get them, what, what is the difference and, and do you target them differently? Do they take different baits and do they reside in different places? Cute. To be quite honest, I've never caught a black muscle cracker. I know they do catch a few. They did get a few in Stilby, but yeah, I never had the privilege to really catch one. With the muscle cracker, with the white one that we target or that we get installed by is basically, I normally get it when you target for Hallyun, you'll get sometimes a muscle crack in between. So then your tackle is very light. I mean, and you really need to play very nice to get it out. But otherwise um, we'll use crab, red crab, and muscle crack is also very fond of alacrical. Yeah, so it's like you also target them in the rocky areas. Basically, yeah, we'll, we'll target your Hallyun and your edibles. You go down to the Stilby Hallyun Derby or you fish the Stilby Hallyun Derby every year as well, I think. Yeah, I'm actually helping with the um, tournament arrangements. I mean, it is our club, the Stilby Club is hosting it. So, <laughs> yeah, um, I think it's, it's, as far as I know, one of the biggest stack and really or release tournament that we do, in, do have in South Africa. Unfortunately, this year we, we had to cancel it. But last okay. year, I think we had the biggest tournament as to date. It's, there's basically about over 400 anglers. We only okay. have prices for released Hallyun. So we don't have any prices if you actually kill a Hallyun. 
Um, ben is, yeah, he's going to come and fish it next year. <laughs> yeah, and we'll get you to do the media for us. That, that was that was my next question. Seeing that you're part of the um, the arrangement and the organising of it, I'm sure we can mm -hmm. have a quite a nice report on that um, tournament for for anglers. Now, with with I it, can arrange something. Yeah, we, what is different with the digital media versus the the magazine? Like always in tight lines, you you can't spend three, four, five, six pages on a tournament um, in a magazine. Mm -hmm. But digitally, you have almost no limitation. You can have a gallery of a hundred photos um, on the digital oh, media. Right. So it, it, it makes the reporting so much richer and you can just give so much more exposure to your sponsors and all of that and also to the anglers themselves. So yes, there's an open no. invitation to, um, to report. <laughs> okay, I'll definitely keep that in mind. Yeah, we'll, definitely. We'll, be the, we'll be the media host. Okay, so <laughs> I, I saw a very interesting picture there. <laughs> So, um, you two ladies must please uh, tell us about that intimate moment. Well, then, <laughs> both packed up laughing. I mean, the moment that photo came on, I like packed up laughing, and Elzan followed soon. <laughs> yeah. Elzan, what happened? This was my first Britia tournament. Now, we do have an initiation when you actually first time get your first Britia cap. And Tish was at that stage our captain, so she had to do the initiation. And after it was finished, I mean, she, yeah, she um, started tackling you, yeah, yeah, tackling me, and I was flat on my back, <laughs> and then she started tickling me as well. So, yeah, and I think um, what this photo is like, all the friendships you do make when you make a prettier team. I mean, I think that was probably one of my best tournaments ever, mainly because it was probably my first tournament in my prettier colours and. Also, the friends that you make there. I mean, there was people like one of my idols, Christelle Westhazen, was there. I mean, Tish. So it was really, yeah, it was just one of my nicest tournaments. All the laughter we had. So, yeah, so that photo just shows that. We were well, going, going from laughter to or laughter because this was also, I think, a very um, relaxed uh, tournament. Tell us a bit more about this one. Yeah, this one was 2018 when we fished the FIPS M um, World Championships in Wales. I mean, we got, we were the first South African team, saltwater team or FIPS team that got a medal. We ended second that year. I mean, we had Tisha's our coach and um, we had a guide from Belgium. It was also one of, I think, the tournaments that you'll never forget. I mean, it was just the team was a brilliant team. I mean, we all worked so well together. And it just shows you if you can work in a team, you can actually achieve very great things. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, Elzana, greatest achievement of Sasa Angler. Now, I know, I know you've been fishing for a while and you are one of the few ladies that have, you know, protea caps with rock and turf with thips. Um, I, I actually think you have the most protea caps um, at the moment or where, where are we standing? Where are you standing? Yeah, I'm standing now at nine consecutive down five protea caps and then I've got seven thips in caps. Oh, so it's 16 total. Absolutely beautiful. If you had, I mean, like if you had any advice that you could give to like an up and coming young lady that, you know, looks and decides that she wants to become involved in, in, in shore angling um, and join Sasa, what, what would your advice be to somebody? You know, I would say, um, first of all, join a club because that is the starting point. I mean, you need to join a club and get into leagues, get into Sasa leagues. leagues. I mean, for me as well, when I joined, it was basically, I couldn't even cast. I mean, my dad, they basically pressured me because Southern Cape was looking for girls. We didn't have a full team for that year's nationals. And that's the only way that you start is by joining a club and fishing with people. I mean, you need to steal with your eyes all the time. And that's the best way to do that. Um, are we going to end up? This, this was your first rally that you caught in that tournament. Um, the people that inspired you throughout your angling career, um, because I'm, I'm, you must be surrounded by so many of them. 
who are the people that inspired you to get where you are or well, not get where you are because you did that on your own but to help you achieve you know your dreams yeah, i think firstly it must definitely be my dad i mean he, I don't think it was very easy for him to have four daughters and he just loved fishing. I mean, he's also a South African, <laughs> yeah, he's also a South African master. So it must definitely be him. And then when I first started my nationals and fish for Southern Cape, my manager was Mike Pouch and I learned so much from Mike. I mean, Legend. two weekends ago, I actually saw Renee as well. And you just think, you know, my dad said to me the first time when I actually went fishing for nationals, he said to me, you can forget everything that I learned you. Just listen to Mike Pouch. That's all. And I mean, what I've learned from Mike was amazing. I mean, that I'll always keep that with me. And then later on, the, we did have like, there's a lot of people that helped me in my journey with my Pratia Colors. And then I think the latest inspiration will definitely be my sister. She, which one? Which one? The, <laughs> the left one. Right at the left, the blonde. That one. Yeah, she um, she got a pretty colors last year. Yeah, last year for the first time. So we fished uh, internationals together last year um, against Namibian Stray Spy. And yeah, and this year she again got a colors. So hopefully we'll be going to Namibia end of the year together. Yeah, and it's yeah. something to really look forward to. Uh, that is that is. I cite all my questions because I know that Van is sitting like, you know, <laughs> vibrating. Right. No, we need, to, we need to get to know um, Alzana a little bit better. Her preferences, <laughs> her likes and her dislikes, and I'm not going to ask anything about drones and kites this time. <laughs> I had a couple of comments and I had a couple of looks. So, uh, and consistently... Neither. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so let's talk about fishing. And um, you are not allowed to pull a tish on me. You're not allowed to try and qualify or both or not them or put anything uh, else in. <laughs> you just answer, you choose one of them. It's a choice. And you have one second oh. to choose. Rocks okay. or surf wading? Surf. Duckbill or stingray? Duckbill. Cobb or garrick? Cobb. Raggy or bronzy? Bronzy. Grinder or multiplier? Grinder. <laughs> Marlon <laughs> or braid? <laughs> braid. Sard or mullet? Uh, mullet. Choka or oki? Choka. Sea lice or prawn? Prawn. Ghost cotton or latex? Latex. Circle or jay? Circle. Okay, let's move to inside your house. <laughs> Tiles or carpets? Tiles. Leather or cloth? Um, leather. Jeans or designer? Jeans. Silver or gold? Silver. Lipstick or mascara? Lipstick. <laughs> Steak or chops? <laughs> Steak. Audi or BMW? BMW. Ford or Toyota? <laughs> uh, Toyota. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move to the music. Uh, rock or country? Country. Let's move to the bright area uh, further. Beer or gin and tonic? Gin and tonic. Wine or champagne? <laughs> Wine. Uh, let's move to the TV. Bella Londres or Game of Thrones? Game of Thrones. Bobby van Jarfeld or Justin Bieber? Bobby. <laughs> Last one. <laughs> Steve or Bok? Bok. <laughs> because he's fishy. <laughs> yeah, that as <is> well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great. Uh, thank you, Alzan, for allowing us to get to know you a little bit better. And um, thank you for sharing. Uh, Tish, any closing statements from your side or questions? No, Sparky, but so good to chat to you and so good to see you again. And you, um, I can't wait to see you on the beach. Um, so let's just hope uh, competitions open up at some time. And to everyone watching us tonight, um, thank you so much for, you know, taking your time. And we hope to see you again next week. Well, that's it. Thank you, ladies. Uh, it was great chatting to you. Thank you for our viewers. It was great to have you on a Saltwater Wednesday again. And uh, we chat to you again next week. In the meantime, um, also have a look at all the other programs every night at uh, 5.30 on, on the line on For Anglers, the digital platform that keeps fishing alive. And remember to check in, sign up, and uh, go and read. There are lots and lots, 2,000 articles uh, on the site. So go and enjoy. And remember, you guys are awesome. Cheers.